Hi there, I'm Jessica Kringle. Of course, most of you know me as Mrs. Claus, and I keep getting a lot of questions about what do you do the rest of the year, Mrs. Claus? I mean, you know, you know that I'm helping with Santa and the toy shop and those kinds of things, but, um, you know, I, I definitely take care of the normal things that a, a wife does, but I also do a lot of crafting, and I wanted to share with you these amazing plates. I got, I'm not kidding, for 50 cents at a church rummage sale. Now, these are wonderful. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got, it's etched in it, has a Christmas design. This has some poinsettias and what looks like some pine cones and some, um, a bow and some pine leaves there. Just don't want to drop it. It's fragile. And these are so wonderful to kind of decorate and have some craft fun with. So I want to show you what I did. I got two of them that are exactly the same. And look at that one. Now, let me tell you how I did this. I didn't just paint on it. This is still completely smooth. And any of the spots that you are going to have your food touch will not have any paint on them painted the underside and the back. Now here are a couple more designs that I've gotten from the different yard sales. This one has um, a little snow scene and this is gorgeous. 50 cents for this. You could check your thrift stores. Now you know I always say there are no mistakes, there are only creative opportunities. But if you do make a creative opportunity on one of these, if it only costs 50 cents then you're no harm, no foul. It's all good. But anyway, this is just beautiful. I'm, I, I don't know if I'll paint this one. It's just so pretty as it already is. And then um, I've got this cute little one with a Christmas tree in the center and some holly around the outside. It's so pretty. And then here's another large one with a giant Christmas tree in it and kind of also holly around the outside and wreath. They don't look exactly alike, whoops, but they're very similar. So um, again, look for these and you can add some decoration to them and then you can put something on there as a gift for people for Christmas. All right, so you're not going to use just any paint with these. Um, these are enamel paints, they're called. They are an acrylic paint. They work just like an acrylic paint, which is amazing because I love that acrylics, before they're dry, you can wash them or wipe them clean and it shouldn't stain too much unless you get it on fabric, of course. I also love with acrylics that you can mix them and create different colors pretty easily. So this, I wanted two different tones in my poinsettias so that it wasn't just all red. And so um, for this darker color, I just took the red and put in just a splash of green, not enough to make it brown. And I'll be really honest with you, this brown, I didn't purchase this. I also um, mixed green and red make brown. And then I put just a drop of yellow in there so that, um, you know, I could make it a little bit lighter. Same with the green. You can see that the leaves here are a very light green and I wanted a darker green for the evergreen part. So I just put a splash of blue in there and it made it that darker color. So, set this down. You have to be really careful with these, they're fragile. So I've gotten away with getting, now here's a lesson from school, the primary colors, okay? gotten the primary colors, um, black and white. And then sometimes greens turn out really strange when you try to mix them. So I did go ahead and purchase the green one as well. And how you know that these are okay for enamels is on the top of them, they have a glass. And the, the thing about enamel paints is that they're good for painting smooth surfaces like glass if you want to make some decorated mugs or any kind of smooth surface. These are really great paints to use for that. Um, you can, it, you need to wait an hour between coats and it does take a couple of coats to get it really a solid um, so that you can't hold it up and see too much light through it. Uh, also so that you can't see your brush strokes. No matter how hard you try, you get some brush strokes in there. Um, you also can set it by waiting for an hour and then baking it in the oven. The instructions are on the bottles. Um, also, if you don't want to bake it, you can just wait. It says 21 days. In 21 days, the paint should be set enough 
that it becomes top top rack dishwasher safe. I wouldn't. I would wash them by hand, but it's an option for those people who like to not wash anything by hand. So I'm going to show you on this small plate, just, I, not, I won't do the whole thing on camera because that would take a long time, but I'm going to just show you a couple of the tricks for painting this. And let me set these aside. Now here's another little trick for you. Um, I've been mixing my paint and using it in one of those cute little paint trays, but sometimes, especially when you have mixed colors yourself, so you've got to make sure you've got that exact same color, and also because you have to wait an hour be between the coats that you place, um, you've got to make sure that this doesn't dry up. So what I did was I took, put it in a, a zippy bag of some sort, and then I also put a wet paper towel on top of it. And yeah, it gets a little bit of goo on the paper towel, but that keeps your paints nice and soft so that you can continue to use them when you go back for your other coats. Another thing to keep in mind when you're painting something on glass, and I have seen artwork done on a piece of glass that is then set into a frame um, when somebody wanted to use acrylic paint instead of using canvas or paper, I've seen them paint directly on glass. So normally what's important with painting with acrylic is that, you know, because they cover so well when you put something down, if you, if you make a creative opportunity, then you can put something back over it. Um, when you're painting the back side of something so that you see it here first, it's really important that you don't keep those creative opportunities happening in your first coat. So, um, you know, if I were painting this to look at it this way, I would paint the whole tree green and then I would paint the different balls in the different colors. I need to paint those balls first because when I put the green over it, that's what's going to show through here. If you make a creative opportunity, you can take it to the sink and wash it with a little bit of water and it comes right off or use um, a Q-tip or some paper towels or a little piece of cloth that you don't care about. I think I'm going to start with the holly just a little bit. So um, holly has red berries, so I'm going to take this and put a little bit of that in here. It's also really helpful to have a solid color underneath because that way with your decorative tablecloth or the grain in your wood of your um, table, you're, you know, you're able to see what, what it is you're trying to paint. So you just dry brush, dip into your paint, you do want it a little bit gloppy. Now, most of these, um, because the images are etched into the glass, it's called relief. It's, it's cut in. It's deeper. So you're not painting on something flat. You've got a little bit of, of, uh, texture there. And if you make a creative opportunity, you can just start trying with your finger to erase it. done with our pretty little plate here and you can see that I did the colors in between and then I let it dry in between them and all we have left to paint now is the tree itself. I wanted to show you, I know that um, Crafters Countdown showed these little stylus dotting tools in one of the rock videos that they did um, I think for the 4th of July. So I was having a little bit of difficult time making the holly berries perfectly round, and since they are indented a little bit, as I talked about before, it was really easy to dip this into some of the paint 
and then just go in a circle around the edge and it filled those in and made them really beautifully round. So you can see I did the same with the um, ornaments on the tree as well. So the stylus dotting tool is very nice. If you can't find one of these or don't have one, you can always dip the back side of your paintbrush into your paint and do the same thing, just sort of, and then you don't have the, the you know, the splayed brush kind of making it different shapes. It sticks more to the round shape for you. So for our tree, Remember I told you that I love acrylic paints because they blend so well if you want to make your own colors. Now for the holly on this plate, I simply used green right out of the bottle. So this green is this green. Now before I put the green on there, I went ahead and colored the veins in. There were already veins in the leaves and so I just um, actually, I used this for that also. I just kind of very carefully ran some of the paint along the edges of these veins, which are, they're, they're sticking up this way. They're not indented, they're, they're poking. So a um, little bit more difficult to try to keep those as thin as possible with a brush, even a very small brush. So I went ahead and used this to um, do the veins as well. So we want just a little bit of blue in our Christmas tree color. So it looks like a nice, nice spruce or fir. Not quite as bright blue. So I'm going to mix in that. And if we want it lighter, we can add a drop of white. If we want it darker, we can add a drop of black. I think this is going to be just fine with the blue and the green together. You could also add just a splash of yellow if you wanted it just a little bit more greeny. I'm going to put just a touch more green in there because it turned out a very, very dark blue. Something else that I wanted to tell you that I did, I wanted the balls inside of the tree, some of them to be silver and some of them to be gold. And they didn't have gold or silver enamel paints. And remember I showed you those when I first started working on this. So what I did was I used my regular acrylic paints and then right behind it to kind of seal it, I went ahead and used yellow and white just to, um, make sure it's sealed. And then we are going to paint this Christmas tree green on top of it also. And so that will truly seal it up. And then I'm going to just starting at the star and working my way down, add a coat of our wonderful Christmas tree color that we just mixed. Now you could very carefully try to go around the balls and um, not color green over them if that's what you choose to do. For me, again, because I'm sealing an acrylic that wasn't an enamel, and because it doesn't matter to me what the backside or bottom of the plate looks like, it's okay to just go ahead and fill in the whole thing. I've seen in a fired clay technique to do a sort of antiquing effect. You would put your paint on and let it fill in the grooves and then you very carefully wipe it and um, the paint should wipe off of the raised surfaces and only stay in the indented surfaces. So I tried that with this and I'm afraid that the indented surfaces aren't indented enough that when I wiped it, it didn't um, come out. And I even tried wrapping the paper towel around um, a butter knife actually so that it was flat and it went ahead and scraped across there. And again, I was not successful in this. In a different plate, it might work differently that, it, it, you know, if the indentations are deeper, if it's etched a little bit deeper, then you would be able to do that. So experiment, play around. Again, when you get these at such a great discount, it's okay to try some creative opportunities and see what you come up with. And because acrylic paints are so wonderful to wash when they're still wet, I couldn't even tell that I ever did that with the plate because I simply took it to the sink and washed off the green paint that had 
gotten smeared everywhere because I tried to do that technique where you rub it off. This is going to take a couple of coats if I want it really thick and not as transparent. So, and you're supposed to let it dry between coats. So I'm going to do that as well. I thought about adding um, some color around the edge of here where it's sort of a frosted glass, but after looking at it for quite a while, it just decided, no, I'm just going to leave it. Just going to leave it glass. It's got enough of a decoration to it. I think it's really beautiful. And there we go. We've got that all painted in. And what we need to do is let this dry for an hour. I will go ahead and put another coat on there. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and bake it because with our 2018 countdown, I have some treats that I need to use this for. So be sure and catch those and you'll see which one I use on this plate. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you are enjoying crafting with Mrs. Claus and I hope to see you for our 2018 countdown. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.